Welcome to Building New York. My name is Michael Stoller. There are developments taking place all over New York City. There are developments in Williamsburg, uh, Lincoln Center, Chelsea, Tribeca, Harlem. And many of these developments are being done by the individual sitting with me. I'm very fortunate today to have Jeffrey Levine, President of Levine Builders and President of Douglaston Development. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So how does a, you know, you were born 53 years ago uh, in Brooklyn. Um, where were you born? I was born in East Flatbush, or East New York, um, at the Brooklyn Women's Jewish Clinic on Eastern Parkway. And, and then, you know, you, as you said to me, you lived with your your Bubba and Zeta, with your grandparents, and you, your father was in the Korean War. My father was serving in the Army at the time of the Korean War. Thank God he was stationed in Germany. And we lived, my mother, with my Bubba and Zeta on, uh, I guess it was 96th Street and Church Avenue. And then you moved, I mean, truly, you know, a developer over here, you moved into a New York City housing project. When we, I was the oldest of four, and when my younger brother and two sisters came into the family, we moved into the Linden Houses, which was a New York City Housing Authority project over in the East New York section off of Linden Parkway. Uh, went to public school 190 at the time over there and had a very nice childhood. And then you moved to Queens. At a certain point uh, after my bar mitzvah, actually, uh, we moved out. My father and my uncle and my Zaidi bought uh, two attached, two family homes in the Douglaston Bayside area in Queens, where I then attended Cardoza High School and was in the first graduating class there. Now, now your father and your grandfather owned a taxi medallion, am I correct? That's correct. And so now you graduate Cardoza High School, and you go to one semester you go to Queens College. I actually went a year to Queens College, and then I found my calling, which was uh, the building business, by having worked for the fathers of friends in the neighborhood during my summer years, and when school was not in effect, I worked for uh, the Natanakola family doing roofing and siding. I worked for the Palazzi family doing excavation and foundation concrete, and uh, ultimately knew that I loved the building business. And in order to pursue a career and satisfy my parents and get a college education, I transferred over to uh, City College Architecture, which was uh, the best in all the free education you could get. Now, when you're at City College, you were, you were working full time, you said to me. Yes, I had actually uh, gone to work um, for a fella by the name of Ruby Cassell, who was a general contractor at the time. I initially started uh, working with him in the summer, um, and at a certain point he left me on a project actually down at 23rd Street and 1st Avenue at the Veterans Hospital, where uh, I overnight became a construction superintendent. Now, you graduate, high, you graduate college in what, 1975? 1975. And we were in, it was a difficult time, 1975. There weren't that many jobs. That's 100% correct. 1975 was in the immediate aftermath of the uh, oil inflation economic downturn. And building in New York was not in any way at a frenzy. At the time, I was actually offered positions in Houston because the oil patch was frankly booming at that time. Um, but New York has been, as a city, my first and only love, and uh, leaving was not an option, certainly with my family ties. So I actually answered an ad in the New York Times, and I called a fellow by the name of Bob Oaken, who was... Now you said there were 300 responses or something like that? Well, Bob Oaken was a partner with a fellow by the name of Herb Mandel, who has a long history as a very distinguished member of a building family of New York going back to the Roaring Twenties. And at the time, the number that I called, which I can still remember, um, I was one of 300 calls to a small classified in the Times, I was told. And in the final analysis, Sonny Oaken, uh, Bob's wife, 
passed a comment to the effect that I sounded like a nice Jewish boy and he should give me the job, which he did. And, and what was your job? What, what was your specific job? Uh, I mean, you, you were an architect, but you never practiced well, architecture. I had, I had my bachelor's of science in architecture at a city college. Um, so I had somewhat of a background. I had a good field background, having worked in various phases of construction. And as an assistant super, I was there essentially to follow the work in the field, to check on the manpower distribution of the manpower, the conformance of the work. And for what at the time was a huge sum of $250 a week, I got to learn as much as I could learn. Now, I think you're 29 years of age and something happens. You meet Randy or you get married to your wife, but at 29 years of age, Jeff Levine, who was this CM, construction manager, or whatever it is, decides to set up his shingle to become a builder of New York. Well, essentially what happened, I had not yet met my wife. I actually um, was still single, and I was at the time 79, 26 years old, and there was a lull in the development operation of Herb Mandel, the fellow for whom I was working, um, and he, of course, wanted me to stay with the organization towards the end that things would be picking up, he hoped, shortly. But the reality is I was anxious to be very productive and I wasn't satisfied just sitting in an office in a management operation at the time. So I essentially hung up a shingle without knowing anything or anybody and went into business. Now, when you were with Herb, you, you told me you, you were involved with certain interesting projects, the conversion of... Uh, 88 Lexington Avenue, the old Blue Cross building. What, what type well, of projects? Were you, were you? The, the Mandel organization um, basically uh, utilized the J51 tax abatement regulations, which were a, a tax abatement and uh, benefit program, which if you renovated existing buildings and brought them back into better operating condition, mechanical systems, um, exterior systems, you were given credit towards taxes due as well as an abatement on improved taxes. Having said that, um, I went to work for Mandel initially at 88 Lex, which was the old Blue Cross building, magnificent limestone building on 26 and Lex. Then we went up to the Paris Hotel and Health Club, up on, well, I say health club, the pool, which was a function of the hotel, became a health club, but the Paris was the renovation of an existing 24-story building into a rental at that time on the Upper West Side, which was an area which was evolving day by day. So it's 1979, and... and mm. You have how much capital when you went into business? Um, none. <laughs> and how do you get a job? How, how do you get a job as a contractor? Well, I was uh, started very small. I was willing to work very hard. Um, some of the architects that I had come to know through my work with Mandel, some of the contractors I had come to know, referred smaller projects my way. And I always say, thank God I survived my initial mistakes um, to go on to bigger and better work. And you know, you always say that being a success in business is not often knowing everything right out of the gate. It's being able to deal with the mistakes you make along the way and not repeat them. 1984, you said, was a, a, an interesting year. Uh, something you did in the meat market with Alan Friedberg? That's a very funny story. Uh, amongst those people who were making referrals of my new contracting concern, and I guess the year was actually about 84 because it coincides with the uh, birth of my first and only son, Benjamin. Um, I was referred to Mr. Freeberg by an, a, an attorney, Sheldon Lobel, zoning attorney, as well as uh, an architect. You might remember Wex Aggressor Menziuso, who had done some work for me when I worked with Mandel. And they referred him to me as a young, competitive, and eager to please new contractor. So I met with him, and he asked me to send him some literature on my new enterprise. And frankly speaking, I had no literature. We didn't have that much of a history. Um, and I certainly didn't have a brochure with which to share with him. So what I did was I took a, a photocopy of a picture of my newborn son, and I put a caption beneath it, which essentially said, help feed this child. And he thought that was uh, very funny. And the bottom line is not only did we go on to build that job, I think it was called the Village Point, 
down on 14th Street and 9th Avenue, which was the, one of the beginnings of the evolution of the meatpacking district. But I went on to do a number of other jobs uh, for uh, Al through the years, including the Sutton Hotel, which one of your previous uh, interviewees recently purchased and converted into, con or is converting into condominiums as we speak. Now, you said in 1986, you, uh, another mm -hmm. one of my guests, you got involved with uh, a man who's, uh, whose sons were on my show, uh, a guy by the name of Harry Suna. What happened with you and Harry Suna? Because that was a, a change. You got into a lot of development where you became a developer as opposed to a contractor. Well, it's an interesting story. I was initially uh, brought to Harry by uh, two fellas who used to be uh, in the wood flooring business. Um, they had gone to work for Harry because Harry had begun doing work in association with the New York City uh, participation loan programs in the Bronx. And it was pretty rough and tumble work. And Harry, as you recall, was primarily one of the largest sheet metal contractors in the city of New York. And these two fellows, again, recommended me as somebody who could do work and do it cost effectively and well. So I, I met with Harry. I did some very difficult work as a contractor to Harry up uh, on Brady Avenue in the Bronx. I, I Very guess, good neighborhood at that time. Uh, it was a rough neighborhood. These buildings had been, uh, in some cases, partially damaged by fire, and we were rebuilding the patent roofs uh, uh, with methods and means that were not recognized by today's standards. So we were literally tying ropes to ourselves and rebuilding mansard roofs and burnt out buildings. Anyway, we did it cost effectively, and we did it right. But Harry had a funny habit, may he rest in peace, I loved him dearly, is uh, he didn't like to let people make a lot of money. So after a few projects, uh, Harry called me in and offered me another contract. And Harry, i got to tell you the truth, I'm busy now, and I have clients that actually let me like, make a living. So at that point, we kind of went our own ways until I got a wonderful call, I would guess, uh, about six months later. And uh, Harry had a designation of a major project through HPD's vacant building program a series of approximately six buildings up on Shakespeare and Woody Kest in the Bronx, um, which were, again, in a dire state of collapse and need of repair. Um, and I had the construction capabilities to renovate these buildings. Um, and at that point, he said, don't be my contractor, come be a partner. And at that point, um, his sons, Alan and Stuart, who to this day are my dear friends and partners in many projects, as you may know, uh, we became involved renovating those buildings, helping bring back, frankly, we think, a, an important part of the Bronx, and it went on to be a very successful project. Then you did a project in Douglaston, Queens. Was that a change? I mean, you, you have Douglaston development, but what, you did 60 condominiums in Douglaston, Queens? Well, an opportunity had come along through uh, an attorney friend where a contract had, in essence, fallen through to purchase a property to develop a condominiums. I had not yet done anything of that nature to date. Uh, I did not have the financial wherewithal credibility. I had the capability. And I've always found if you have capability, you know, financial credibility comes along. And what happened in that particular case is I approached uh, my former employer and a partner of his, it was Herb Mandel and Stephen Carrasso, and I asked them to provide the necessary capital and a partnership structure so that I could develop the job, and it worked out great. We did a beautiful project. The economy supported it very well. Um, it was just before some of the corrections that were about to follow, having to do with the savings and loan scandals as well as the um, 421A tax abatement expirations for uh, apartment buildings in New York. Now, you built or developed a thousand units for the housing partnership? When you say built or developed, I would say for in excess of a thousand dollars. We work with the New York City uh, uh, Housing Preservation and Development for both uh, as designated developers through the participation loan program, as I said, the vacant building program, as well as uh, contracting for them through various programs, including the Neighborhood Entrepreneur and the uh, Neighborhood uh, uh, Not-for-Profit programs. Now, the turning point in your career, as you were saying to me when we met, really mm -hmm. took place probably in Harlem when you were involved with the Renaissance Plaza. Now, nobody knew there were no comps. There was no idea of what was going on, and you were designated under the anchor program, the cornerstone program, no, or the anchor. No, it was in the initial program. Was the anchor program under the anchor program? 
and the reality is, you know, working with uh, Kathy Wild, who now runs a partnership for the city of New York, but at the time was running the housing partnership, we did a number of new homes programs, projects throughout the boroughs, and we had worked extensively, as I indicated earlier, in central Harlem with not-for-profits such as Hope Community renovating vacant shells for low and moderate income occupancy. Right, but now on 116th but, well, Street. Let me say, as a result of my having worked there for many years and having been familiar with many of the neighborhood entrepreneurs, neighborhood contractors, we had forged relationships, which we think played an important part in Suna and Levine getting designated through the anchor program the Renaissance, as we called it, which was a 263-unit limited equity co-op on top of approximately 70,000 square feet of community retail, which was, frankly, the goal of the anchor program, because in many of these economically um, difficult areas, while the housing subsidies brought residential housing units on an affordable basis, the retail was not following suit. And under the, at that time, the Giuliani administration, Kathy initiated this um, anchor program, which was to bring the necessary commercial amenities to the neighborhoods. So that was really the focus. Um, at the time, we committed lots of resources in terms of equity and energy to getting the project done. But because it was a for sale program and there were no for sale comps that would support such a venture, the, basically had, the project basically had to have a rental fallback, which made us have to do a very good job of design and development in terms of the numbers. In the final analysis, the project was enormously successful for the 263 uh, limited equity co-ops on a moderate income basis. I think we had in excess of 10,000 applications. And that success of that project did two things it helped propel that neighborhood into a for sale mode because as you may know that project served as the comp for all of the for sale condominiums and co-ops that followed in, in its path. Uh, in addition to which for my organization the fact that we had stepped up and done what was again as a result of city subsidy a relatively large project with many moving parts um, we were able to establish for our own credibility's sake, our capability to deal with such projects. In addition to that, you got involved with the assisted living business. You built two assisted living homes. I actually have built a number of them. What happened is a contractor, again, my contracting opportunities, my contracting activities have often led to development opportunities. Um, with regard to the project you're speaking of, I had uh, become involved with two properties, um, again, in the late 80s, when things were actually starting to get a little bit negative in the residential real estate market. Um, having said that, I met uh, through Richard Bassick, um, who I had met earlier when he was uh, involved in the Starrett organization, when I built as a contractor for them. Um, I met uh, the CAPS and senior quarters people who were owners and operators of assisted living. And together we jointly developed the, uh, what is now known as Atria um, in Riverdale and Atria in Kew Gardens, the two of which comprise, I guess, something like 500 units of assisted and independent living in the boroughs, the two of the largest projects. I've since sold out to Atria, who uh, was my partner. 2000, or was it 2000 or 2001, I'm not certain, you decided to build a development in partnerships with Phil Pilevsky on 50th Street off 8th Avenue. What happened? Well, again, very often my capability as a nuts and bolts builder makes me an appealing partner. And frankly, I would be doing a disservice to a number of the people I partnered without, if not mentioning all of the names, I've been very fortunate that I've been uh, blessed with some great partners. You know, the project you're referring to with Phil was a project where he had a leasehold on a parking lot. The leasehold was not financeable for purposes of residential rental at that time. I was able to convince uh, I guess it was Aaron Ziegelbaum, who was the parking lot owner, to uh, convert his lease to a sale. I was able to convince Phil to partner with me in the sale, and we went on to develop it with the Bank of New York as a financing. And that was probably one of the more important projects 
to that time in my career because we were completing that project. And I don't know if this is where you were going, but I'll take you there anyway. We were completing that project in the fourth quarter of 01. Um, we were high on expectations of the rents we would achieve because there were a number of projects in that part of Western New York where um, rents were going through the roof, and we had great expectations. And then September 11th occurred in 2001, and here I had a loan, which was one of the largest I've ever been involved with, um, with personal guarantees to the Bank of New York. And in the wake of September 11th, the climate of uh, the psychology of fear, the lack of job creation, the fear of some exodus, I thought I was in dire straits. I did not think that I would be able to rent up that building, which we call the Cameo ultimately, for anything near the rents I needed to service the mortgage. Well, in the final analysis, whether it be luck or I like to think it was the strength and the beauty of New York City, we were in a very short period able to lease up that building at rents that were very viable. Well, having that event under my belt, the, it fortified my convictions about the city of New York. I like to say that was probably the seminal event in my business career because up until that point, I had continued to do my third-party construction. I, in essence, did development on a very conservative, and I tried to limit my risk basis. And what I saw in the wake of that tragic event, that this city took such a body blow and in spite of that body blow, came back not as good as before, but far better than before. I think that the vitality that this city has shown in the wake of that terrible event has been beyond my expectations and continues to put me in awe. And with regard to that, you did a ma as a contractor, you did a major project uh, on 90 West Street? Absolutely. Uh, a couple things happened, as I said. First off, um, my confidence as a result of the strength the city showed at that time inspired me to tie up a number of major projects. One project which we did in partnership under the Cornerstone program with uh, Glenwood Management was a magnificent rental up on 102nd Street where we created an 80-20 of the highest caliber up on 102nd Street and 1st Avenue, I think helping to anchor that neighborhood where we're achieving rents beyond their expectations. Then I tied up a property on West 23rd Street in Chelsea, where we went on to do a condominium of roughly 340 units, where we have achieved, again, tremendous sales success. And then I partnered with Continental Properties, two of the most lovely young men I've ever dealt with, the Fish Brothers, out of New Jersey. And you went to Sophie, you told me. That's Fifth well, Avenue. Well, and well, we did. This was you created we came Sophie, to right? Sophie, absolutely. I still fight for, for, with... For my, uh, for my <laughs> audience, Sophie is south of Fifth Avenue. No, south Fifth. South, south Fifth. Fifth. South, south Fifth. Fifth. I fight with my brother-in-law, Stephen Chanda, who insists he named it. But for the record, I named it. <laughs> we'll continue to fight about that forever as we continue to fight about whether I was safe or out at home plate. So, now, so at 325 Fifth Avenue, okay, you, you built 555 West 23rd Street right near the Chelsea Piers in the Art District in Chelsea. Correct. And then now opening relatively soon is 325 Fifth Avenue, this, what, 50-story? 50 50-story 50 tower, 32nd to 33rd on the east side of 5th, something where... You left the bagel store there, but, you know... Well, but we bought his air rights, and the bottom line, we worked there again with Steve Jacobs, an architect that I have quite a bit of success with. If you remember going back, we did the Gansevoort Hotel with Steve, we did the Library Hotel, and, uh, you know, he's been a pleasure to work with. We built a building over there that has been both... Uh, financially as well as critically well accepted. Um, and, and how does Jeff Levine, who was born in Eastern Parkway, now goes back to Brooklyn and goes to Williamsburg? What are you doing in Williamsburg? Well, you know, again, going back uh, to 2002, um, having great belief in the city of New York and always recognizing that the city of New York, what I love about building here is it's very difficult. And the fact that it's very difficult makes it uh, very favorable for those of us who know how to work here. And I've been working and building here my whole life. An opportunity was brought to me um, by a friend, um, actually an attorney who I did business with, Arthur Strauss, uh, whereby a fellow by the name of Lewis Silverman, who owned 4G's Trucking, uh, asked me to partner with him in the development of a site that needed rezoning. 
I was very well aware of the fact that the current administration, the Bloomberg administration, recognized the value of rezoning to create housing opportunities for all the people who wanted to come live and work here in New York. And now you're building what, the Edge? It's called? We are calling the project the Edge. It's comprised of over 1,000 fair market condominiums and a series of low and high rise towers, as well as the beauty of a 350 affordable units being subsidized by both HPD and HDC. So that's going to be in Williamsburg. And, and then Jeff Levine is now going to Lincoln's, uh, Fordham University Lincoln Center? Absolutely. Uh, again, working with the Fish Brothers of Continental Properties, we pursued a, uh, a property on the campus of Fordham University. We're working with the administration at Fordham University to usher through city planning a modification of an already approved urban renewal program to allow us to build a tower for which we've engaged the offices of Cesar Pelli um, overlooking Lincoln Center at 62nd Street off of Broadway. And you have something in Tribeca. We're building a wonderful gem of a project down on the corners of Greenwich and Watts in Tribeca, absolutely. And then you said, last but not least, you're doing another one on the Highland. Am I correct? Yes, we have been very fortunate in that going back approximately a year ago, we were able to negotiate with an, an international owner a property that had been in their family for, I understand, over 100 years on the corner of 30th Street and 11th Avenue, adjacent to and overlooking the High Line. So we'll be building there approximately 370 units rental. We're very excited about so, that. So, Jeffrey? I've known you a long time, and I think my audience and everyone will really understand that you have been a true builder of New York, and I'm happy that you were here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me.